In this video, I want us to investigate the velocity vector as an object moving along a curved path. The velocity vector is defined as the time derivative of the position vector. And we can think of the position vector as an arrow whose tail sits at the origin and the tip extends all the way to the position of the object like so. We'll call that position vector r. And then using the definition of a derivative, the velocity of the, of the object is given by this. In a previous video, we slowly and methodically constructed the velocity vector from this definition. In this video, we're going to do the same, but on a more interesting path, which, re which we'll reveal more about the velocity. I'm going to assume that you've seen that previous video. So if things move a little too quickly, you might want to go back to that previous one to review. All right, so here's an object moving around a curvy path. Technically speaking, it's a Lisa Zhu figure, in case you're interested. Um, it's kind of like a figure eight turned on its side. Yeah, get the picture. So let me stop this thing right about, let's say right here. This point labeled A is the current location of the object. And I can put in the position vector, that green arrow. Maybe you can see very light, carefully, it's, it's labeled R. Again, that's the position vector of this object at the current time. And the position vector represents this term in our expression for velocity. Now we're going to define another point. There it is. I'm calling that one B. And point B is just a little bit ahead of point A. Watch, I'll start the animation again. Here we go. You see how B is just a little bit ahead. Right? And when I say it's ahead, what do I mean? I mean that it's ahead in time. Right now, for example, B is 0.41 seconds ahead in time from point A. So what I mean by that is the location of point B is where point A will be 0.41 seconds into the future. So one cool thing I can do in this animation is I can change the, the amount of lead time for point B. In other words, I can stretch out that lead time. Here point B is a full one second ahead of point A. Or I can make that delta T smaller. Here we go. Now dt, delta T is 0 0.01 seconds, or 1 one hundredth of a second. Here it looks as though point A and point B are right on top of each other. And just so you can see how moving the slider changes things, watch this. So here, as I move the slider back and forth, you can see a point A keeps its position. Nothing happens, nothing changes the point A. This DT affects how far ahead of point A uh, we are. Now the reason we have this other point B is because our definition of velocity refers to a position vector in the future, yes? Position vector in the future. Position vector in the future. Wait, what's that? In just a second, I want you to pause this video. I want you to draw for me on a piece of paper, maybe a scratch piece of paper, the points A and B as they're located right now. And I, I want you to draw the position vector of A. That's this green arrow. Then I want you to draw for me this position vector in the future, right? This term in the equation. Pause the video now. Don't start it up again until you have an educated guess of what that position vector looks like graphically on this page right here. Now remember, position represents the location of the object. In this case, the location of the object at a time delta t in the future. The vector extends from the origin to the tip of point B. That position vector in the future is this one right here that I've indicated with the dotted line. That's this term in the velocity expression. Now here's my next question. I want you to look at the whole numerator. What you see is the difference between two position vectors. It's this position vector minus this position vector. The difference between these two vectors is another vector. Can you draw it? What does the difference vector in the numerator look like in this picture right here? I want you to draw it right now. 
pause the video and draw the difference vector it, that's in this numerator. Then restart the video when you have an answer. We're paused, right? All right. The difference vector we're looking for, the difference vector is right here. It's the pink vector connecting the tips of the two position vectors. Does this make sense? If not, you need to go back and think about what a difference is. It's important that you understand that this is the difference vector that, ap that appears in the numerator of our velocity expression. And now we can put this thing in motion. There it goes. We Check out that difference vector as we're moving along here, right? We've got point A, which is the location of our object at the current time. B is the location in the future time. That pink vector, there's the numerator of a velocity expression, that difference between two positions. Now here I want you to observe something. My origin, which I use to define the position vectors, I can, I can move that around. And if I move that origin around, the position vectors change, right? The green arrows change. But as I move around the origin, notice the pink arrow, does, the origin doesn't affect the pink arrow, right? The pink arrow is independent of where I set up my origin. That's going to be interesting to us. All right, so now let's go down to our definition of velocity here. And the next thing we need to do is divide by dt. It's important to note that delta t is a scalar, right? It's this change in time between the current time and that future time at point B. At this instant in this animation, dt is 0 0.5 seconds. Mathematically, dividing by delta t is equivalent to multiplying by 1 over delta t, right? And remember what happens when you multiply by a scalar. If you multiply a vector by a scalar, you get a vector in the same direction as the original vector. Right, this vector on top, this change in position vectors, that's the pink vector. If I divide that by delta t, I get another vector in that exact same direction. In fact, I get this vector right here that I have in blue. Yeah, can you see that the blue vector and the pink vector are in exactly the same direction? So this blue vector here is the pink vector on top divided by delta t. Delta t happens to be 0.5. So dividing by 0 0.5 is identical, it is multiplying by 2, right? So the, you can stop the video and pull out your ruler, you know, put it up against the screen. You'll notice that this blue vector is exactly twice as long as the pink vector. They point in exactly the same direction. And this blue vector is that quotient right here we see. The difference between the position vectors divided by delta t. And now I can put this thing in motion. We can watch those, those vectors change, right? So the, look, just watch the, the blue vectors always in the same exact direction as that pink vector. Nice, huh? All right, let's freeze the animation right here. And I want you to take note of what happens when I make delta t get smaller, right? dt here, delta t is getting smaller. And notice that the pink vector is getting smaller too, right? As both numerator and denominator get smaller, they get smaller together, right? And as they get smaller together, their ratio approaches this limiting value right here. The pink vector is almost gone, the delta t is almost gone, but the blue persists. That little pink vector in the numerator represents the distance traveled as a vector and that very small amount of time, the delta t. Distance traveled per time as a vector. This blue vector here is the result of taking this limit. This blue vector is the velocity vector. It's the velocity vector by definition. Now let's put this thing in motion with dt essentially zero. And that blue vector now is the velocity vector. Yeah, kind of cool. Um, it's kind of almost hard to see the, it as the velocity when it's sort of disconnected from the part from the object itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that velocity vector and I'm going to make a copy of it right on top of particle A there. So there we go. So both those two velocity vectors I hope you can see are the exact same thing. But now I've got one of them 
instead of planted at the origin, I've got it planted on the object itself. So we can see the velocity connected to the object itself. Let me get rid of the old one. Yeah, and what I'd like you to do is look at this velocity vector. Take a moment to observe what's going on. Just watch for a second. And I'm going to ask you another question. What can you tell me about the direction? The direction of the velocity vector. Think about it for a moment. Do you notice any rule that it seems to be following here? Following is a good word. What's that velocity vector doing? What's it, or in other words, what's its direction doing? Okay, my observation, and I hope you notice the same thing, is that the velocity vector is tangent to the path. Yeah, did you notice that? Look, right here, tangent to the path. Down here, tangent to the path. Over here, velocity is tangent to the path. No matter, no matter where I seem to stop this thing, it appears to be tangent to the path. Yeah? Check that out. In fact, let's zoom in on this thing. Here we go, zooming in. Yeah? <laughs> That's tangent to the path. And here's where the limit becomes important. Right? We're taking the limit as delta t goes to zero. What happens if delta t is, is big? Not, not this super small 0 0.01. But if delta t is big, look what happens. Point B is over here on the other side of this bend, right? The difference between the two position vectors, you can see oops, it's kind of hidden in there in the pink, right? The difference between those two position vectors is that pink vector. And then the pink vector divided by delta t is that thing right there. And notice that this vector is in some wonky direction. But as I make delta t get small, check it out, b comes back to a. And in the limit as delta t gets small, that difference between b and a lie along the same straightish portion of the path. And therefore, that velocity vector is tangent to the path. Wow, that's gorgeous, isn't it? So just to repeat, I haven't said it enough already, that velocity vector, let me try to regain my original picture, my velocity vector is tangent to the path. Now another observation we can make about the velocity vector is that the velocity vector points in the direction of motion. Do you see it? Right? The, 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 the object is moving sort of down and to the right right now, and so is the velocity vector. Object's moving upward, so is the velocity vector. Down and to the left, so is the velocity vector, right? The velocity vector is pointing in the direct, not only is it tangent to the path, but it's pointing in the direction of motion. Now, why is that? Let's, well, let's spread out the dt again. We can spread out the dt. And maybe I will lose the velocity vector for a second. So remember, the velocity vector points in the same direction as this difference vector, the pink vector, right? And the pink vector always points in the direction of motion because it points from A to B. Here it is stopped, right? That difference vector is going from A to B. And point B is in the future, right? Point B is where A is going to be in a little bit of time from now, right? So that direction has to be in the direction of motion. So that's the direction of the velocity vector, and especially as I let dt go to zero, right? Velocity vector is tangent to the path in the direction of motion. Now, this was really clear in the previous video, if you recall. Here's one where we had the, the object going back and forth along a straight line. And when the object switched its directions, like right here, the velocity vector switched its direction too. Here again, the limit part of the definition of velocity is very important, right? Because if dt is very small, then points A and B lie almost right on top of each other. And they switch directions at almost exactly the same time. Just further evidence of our direction observation. All right, so we're back on the curvy path. And what I'd like to do is make one more observation. 
Here's the question I have for you. What can you say about the magnitude of the velocity vector? Yeah, tell me more about the magnitude of that vector, the length of that arrow. I'm about to answer this question, so if you need to have more time to think about it, please rewind and continue observing. Now, as the object is moving around this path, notice that sometimes it's moving faster and other times it's moving more slowly, right? The magnitude of the velocity vector is largest when the object is moving fast and it's smaller when it's moving more slowly, yes? Can you see that? All right, so to understand why, let's do a little experiment right here. So what I'm going to do is make delta t a little bit bigger. 0.45 seconds, let's say. Let me hide this velocity vector. Yes, so I've got delta t fixed at 0.45 seconds, right? The delta t is in that denominator right there. Let's look at the numerator. The numerator is the, the, the difference vector between point A and point B. And you'll notice when, let's see, when the object's moving fast, that, that numerator is quite big, right? When delta t is 0.45 seconds, point B is quite a bit far ahead of A, right? Because you're going fast, you're going to, you're going to cover quite a bit of ground in that amount of time. In contrast, when we're moving more slowly, so in that corner right here, over that 0.45 seconds, the change in position isn't quite as big anymore. Remember, it's big and then small and then big and then small when it's slowing down, right? So when we take the limit, let's, let's actually put the, put the velocity vector back in. And as we take the limit, delta t is going to get smaller, but it's going to be a fixed amount. Now it's, it's 0 0.01 seconds. But again, in that 0 0.01 seconds, the, the, the numerator gets big when the, when the, the numerator gets big relatively when uh, the object is moving quickly, yeah? Now the observation I'd like to make here is that the magnitude of the velocity vector represents how fast that object is moving. When it's moving fast, that velocity vector is big in magnitude, right? That arrow is big. When the object is moving more slowly, the, the, the arrow or the vector is relatively small. By the way, the magnitude of that velocity vector is called speed. Speed is a scalar. It's how fast you're going. Now, before we finish this video, I'd like to recap what we've learned, the main, the main points. First of all, velocity is a vector. It has both magnitude and direction. The direction of that velocity vector is tangent to the path. Now, tangent to the path can mean two things, you know, forward along the path or backward along the path. Velocity vector points in the direction of motion. So the direction that the object is moving. And finally, the magnitude of the velocity vector indicates speed. In other words, how fast the object is moving. And that's it. Over and out.